Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Dr. K's Psychobabble. Today, we're going to be exploring a cool topic within the field of psychology, specifically within sensation, often paired with perception, and that is looking at binocular cues. Now, what this actually refers to is what mechanisms are built into our physiology, the physiology of our eyes, and how they are spaced apart, and the musculature and whatnot about our eyes that allow us, to a greater degree than most animals on the planet, to see things in stereo, to be able to see the difference between the foreground and the background, a very important evolutionary aspect of the human physiology that gave us lots of advantages over the other animals competing for food and uh, and whatnot. So we're going to take some time looking specifically at a set of those called binocular cues. There are monocular cues. That will be another video. And those are ways in which we determine foreground and background and uh, the 3D sense of the world. Um, that we still have even if we had just one eye. These are specifically binocular cues. They're specific to having two eyes that are looking forward. So let's switch to the slides here and take a look at what I've got. So first, there are a set of concepts to get through here, and each one of these plays a role in how we experience the world in a 3D way. The first is binocular convergence. The second is proprioceptive sense. These two go together. I'm going to be talking about those two together. And then final, retinal disparity, which is the difference between the image that is portrayed on the left retina versus the right retina. So let's take first a look at binocular convergence and proprioceptive sense. Get a little bit of background change and I have this image for you. And what this image shows is a couple of the concepts related to binocular convergence and proprioceptive sense. We have the eyeballs that are sitting here and on the left hand side of this we see that the eyes are focused on an object that is close to the eyes. On the second set of eyeballs, we see that they're focused on something that's far away. And I want, to know, want you to notice something about these particular images, the difference between the eyeballs on the left side and the eyeballs on the right side are where we get our binocular convergence and proprioceptive sense. First, we notice that our bodies actually sense when our lens is being changed within our eye in order to focus on something that's closer to us. So the muscles that are around the lens that bend it in order to focus the light on the fovea, the most clear area of the um, retina, we sense that actual musculature. We sense that lens being squeezed by those muscles as things move closer, as they move forward, as they move further away from us, we sense the relaxing of those muscles and our lens changes shape. The other thing that also happens is our eyes, when something is far away, both eyes are pretty much pointing straight ahead. As something comes closer, and I'll exaggerate this from the top here, as something comes closer to me and I'm looking, my eyes turn. I'm, I'm exaggerating that a lot, but the, the eyes will actually turn and the muscles on the side of the eye, on both sides of the eye, turn the eyeballs in as something is closer. So you'll see again in this image, on the left hand side, the eyeballs are turned in on each other. And on the right hand side, the eyeballs are turned out from each other. That sense that we have of our position of the eye and the size of the lens are both proprioceptive senses. They, they help us determine how close 
something is. So when we think of the uh, when we think of the five senses, we have vision, taste, smell, touch, and hearing. We we often only call those five, but proprioceptive sense is another one of these senses that allows us. There's a whole lot of them allows us to see things. Um, in that 3D way, but just to sense that something is closer versus further, just that particular aspect of something being within the 3D world, we use our proprioceptive sense. Now, the next thing that we're going to look at is retinal disparity. And what retinal disparity really refers to is that on the because we have two eyes and because they're separated from each other on the front of our face and looking forward they're getting almost exactly the same image and the almost part is really important they are ever so slightly different so the left eye has a slightly different image than the right eye and the best way that we can kind of experience this is a little experiment I often do in class and I have a graphic to go along with it, but then I'll demonstrate it for you. If you take your thumb and you put it in, in front of your eye, in front of yourself, and you're, you close one of your eyes and you place your thumb over a lamp that's across the room. So when you're looking through one eye, you are actually not able to see the light because you're covering it with your thumb. And then close that eye and open the other and it appears like your thumb has moved. Depending on which one you started with, it'll move to the left or it'll move to the right. But you didn't move your thumb, but your thumb is no longer covering the light. So while you had your thumb out there, one eye, if you had both of them open, one eye would would have the thumb in front of the light and the other eye would have the thumb in not in front of the light and your brain would combine those images into a single three-dimensional image your thumb would actually your thumb appears twice if you ever do that same experiment put your thumb out in front of you like I'm doing right now and I'm looking at the camera and if I switch my eyes my thumb is in front of the camera or not but if I keep them both open I see one camera and two thumbs did I grow a thumb no one eye is seeing a slightly different positioning of the thumb and it's too close to bring them together to make one image out of it so I see two thumbs one of them is right right in front of the camera the other one is a little bit to the left of it so that is how, that is kind of the principle of retinal disparity. Now we come across retinal disparity in a number of ways. Way back in the day, they used to build special cameras, stereo cameras, pretty, pretty straightforward, that, would, that basically took two pictures at the same time. It was a model of the human face. You had two lenses on this camera, took simultaneously image, simultaneous images, and they would be slightly different from one another. They would take these images, print them on a card, and as you can see in this image, you would place the card on the end of this stick, and you would look through these glasses that are connected to the stick itself, which were focused on that. They were a fixed focus on those two images, and it would give us the appearance of a three-dimensional image. Another more modern adaptation of this is, of course, the Viewmaster, which I have to tell you in the research that I was doing leading up to here, Viewmaster is doing very well. They have digital versions of all these things. I grew up with that thing that you saw on the slideshow. I grew up with that little handle and those discs with the pictures on them. And what it was is on the disc itself, the opposite images all the way around were the same image, but taken with a stereo camera. Now, as a child, I also experienced something else. I remember 
red blue 3d glasses <coughs> excuse me these would come in cereal boxes or they would we could some sometimes when you went to the movies we would we would uh, see like a 3d commercial or whatever and essentially what this was it was a way for graphic artists to create a two-dimensional image and, and using two colors in this case red and blue they could cause they could they could take the same image do a blue version do a red version put these glasses on and the red is only getting through the red lens and the blue is only getting through the blue lens so effectively creating two different images on my retina and we would see a 3d image and here's a uh, set of horses here where you can see the blue horse and the red horse and if you had one of those sets of glasses if you do run and get them put them on and you'll see this horse image still bluish and reddish but kind of jumping out of the screen a little bit now modern day theatrics have moved on from the red and blue because if then, when everything is red and blue, the movie itself or the images don't look natural. Well, 3D images don't look natural either, you know, unless we have the glasses on. But they've come up with some new technology. And I want to describe the use of polarizing glasses, which is what we currently use at the time of this video. If there's a 3D movie to go see, you'll go in and you'll get these shades. And they'll be kind of gray. And what they are are polarizing lenses on the left hand side and the right hand side are two lenses and the, the the structure of the glass or the plastic is based on lines of horizontal and lines of vertical so one of them had lets in light on a vertical vertical sorry they let in vertical light and then the other lens lets in horizontal light Effectively, the horizontal picture goes into our, I'm getting these mixed up here, the horizontal picture goes into our right eye, let's say, and the vertical picture goes into our left. Now, let's take a look at how this actually happens in the movie theater. What we have are actually two projectors. One projector is projecting the image with vertical lines, like the one on the top. The other projector is projecting the same picture with horizontal lines and the pictures are slightly different. So if you don't have glasses on and you're watching a 3D movie, it looks kind of fuzzy because you're seeing both images and they're slightly off, so they would look blurry. Now, the images are projected onto the screen, so the camera that is projecting the vertical image onto the screen creates the image in vertical lines at the same time superimposed on top of this is the image from the other camera imposing horizontal lines notice that this mimics that disparity between the right eye and the left eye these two images coming in and that angle imitates that disparity now we take our shades and we'll note that one side is letting in horizontal and the other one is letting in vertical and our brains see those as two separate images so the image on our left is different than the one on our right our brain combines them and we experience the 3d movie same technology as those original stereograms made with stereo cameras, exact same idea. All we're doing is mucking around with the image that goes on our right eye and the image that goes in our left eye, and we're able to create the illusion of 3D, even though the image that we're looking at is actually two-dimensional. The screen or the picture or the cereal box, whatever it is that we're looking at, is actually two-dimensional. It's not three-dimensional, but by messing around with what image goes into one eye and what image goes into the other, we're able to create that illusion. So, that's it for today. I hope that was interesting, and I will see you next time.